Hey, November is an absolutely fascinating month for music history. Prepare to be amazed. Oh, I'm intrigued. Spill the beans. What's the story this time? But first, have you ever heard about the legendary Jerry Lee Lewis? Of course. He's the great balls of fire guy, right? Exactly. On November 3rd, 1957, Sun Records released that iconic single. It sold over 5 million copies worldwide and became one of the best-selling singles ever. That's impressive. And did you know that on the same day in 1962, Billboard magazine dropped the Western from its country and Western chart title? Yep, they sure did. It reflected a changing landscape in the world of country music. Moving forward a bit, on November 3, 1972, Carly Simon and James Taylor got married. A musical power couple before Jay-Z and Beyonce. Indeed. Their marriage lasted 11 years, and they created some beautiful music together. Jumping to 1985, the Miami Vice TV soundtrack, with hits like In the Air Tonight and Smuggler's Blues, was the number one album in America on November 3rd. That soundtrack was a game changer. Now, here's a fun fact for you. On November 3rd, 1990, EMF released Unbelievable in the UK, reaching number three. But it did even better in the US, hitting number one. Unbelievable indeed. And one more for the road, on November 3, 1998, Britney Spears, at just 16, released her first single, Baby One More Time. Three months later, it skyrocketed to number one in America. Britney's impact was felt right from the start. Guess what happened on November 4, 1972? Johnny Nash's. I can see clearly now. The first reggae tune hit number one on the Hot 100. Reggae making waves. And on the same day in 1984, Prince began his Purple Rain tour in Detroit. Historic. Absolutely. In 1989, Roxette scored their second US number one single with Listen to Your Heart. Roxette had some timeless hits. Did you know that Susie Quattro made her first appearance on Happy Days on November 8, 1977? I had no idea. And Susie, who was a star in the UK, played Leather Tuscadero. How cool! Rolling Stone magazine, featuring John Lennon on the cover, was first published on November 9, 1967. A magazine inspired by rock and roll greats. And in 1973, Billy Joel released a second album, Piano Man. Billy Joel's music has stood the test of time. Also, on November 9, 2002, Madonna broke the Beatles' record for most top 10 hits with Die Another Day. November 11, 1972, was a tragic day for the Allman Brothers Band. Bass player Barry Oakley was killed in a motorcycle accident at the same spot where Dwayne Allman had died a year earlier. A somber piece of rock history. On a brighter note, in 1985, LL Cool J released his debut album, Radio. LL Cool J's debut set the stage for a remarkable career. On November 11, 1993, Nirvana recorded their MTV Unplugged special. A hauntingly beautiful performance. Finally, November 22, 2015, was a big night for Taylor Swift at the American Music Awards. November 15, 1974, marked the release of The Face's final single with the lengthy title, You Can Make Me Dance, Sing or Anything. Quite the title. And in 1980, Kenny Rogers' Lady becomes a number one hit. Kenny Rogers had a golden touch. The world's first jukebox was installed on November 23, 1889, in San Francisco. A piece of history. And on the same day in 1970, George Harrison released, My Sweet Lord. A spiritual classic. 
Freddie Mercury issued a statement about his AIDS diagnosis on November 23, 1991. A somber moment. On November 30, 1971, Sly and the Family Stones, Family Affair, hit number one on the U.S. singles chart. What a funky tune. And in 1974, Elton John's Greatest Hits album began its reign at number one in America. Elton's hits are timeless. Speaking of hits, on November 30, 1979, Pink Floyd released The Wall. An absolute classic. And did you know that on November 30, 2003, a block of East 2nd Street in New York City was officially renamed Joey Ramone Place? The Ramones' legacy lives on. Lastly, in 2012, Glenn Campbell played his very last live performance in Napa, California. Music and history are intertwined in such fascinating ways. It's what makes exploring music history so enjoyable. Couldn't agree more. Let's keep discovering and celebrating these musical milestones. And hey, if you enjoyed this conversation, remember to check out more content like this on at Music and Life KM. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you want more. You heard her, folks. Thanks for joining us today, and stay tuned for more music history stories. Thanks for joining us, and see you on the channel. Music and Life KM. Where music speaks for itself. This was a program for Music and Life KM. By Carlos M. Created by Rune KM Productions.